And uh, as you know, in, uh, Europe heads of state also attend. In the United States, that's not possible because uh, White House reporters are giving up a book the size of paperback Western uh, novel each day accounting for every moment of the president's time. 9.03 a.m., climbed on bicycle. 9.05 a.m., fell off and skinned knee. I mean, every moment of his time, even for this uh, recreational time, is accounted for. So uh, there's no way the White House could explain uh, a president just disappearing for even a few hours at a Bilderberg meeting. So uh, that's not true in Europe. It has a state attend. And they all, and, uh, and as you know, high officials of our State Department, Defense Department, Treasury, and the White House always attend, Defense Department too, and they follow orders like a dog to the whistle. Well, here's the headline. Former NATO Secretary General admits Bilderberg sets global policy. And uh, we have actually a link to the national uh, radio interview where he uh, talked about it. He's uh, Willie uh, Clays, uh, just absolutely incredible. I. I want to go to Mark Anderson, who uh, your cohort, who was there with you for yeah. the four days at Bilderberg here in a moment. But uh, but we've got you guys for another fifteen minutes, so I want to continue with Jim for a moment. Uh, Jim, was there anything from your sources discussed by Bilderberg about the BP uh, spill in the Gulf? Because I know BP in the past has been a big carbon tax promoter, and Queen Beatrix, of course, is one of the big owners of it. Uh, yes, there is. Uh some dis uh, discussion. Let me uh, pile my, uh, pile my notes to get more gasoline taxes are expected. Uh, uh, I'm just having to reach into my memory now. My notes are all scattered all over. No, no, I understand, Jim. Take uh, your time. In fact, in fact, in fact, uh, cover other issues. I know you have you know, your notebook in front of you. You want to go back to exactly what they said from your sources. Uh, other intel that you learned since Friday uh, on Saturday and Sunday, other things that you learned uh, from your sources that we didn't cover Friday? Uh, I think we talked about gas prices on Friday. Did we talk about disarming Americans? Uh, not not much, because you didn't have your notes. Uh, yeah. Flesh that out. Well, um, uh, uh, Bill Berg was celebrating uh, one victory. Uh, on their orders, President Obama signed off on an international treaty promising to disarm Americans. Now, there's no chance the Senate would, uh, the Senate would ratify uh, such uh, radicalism. But if a more left-wing Senate is involved in the election of this year, 2012, there would be reason for concern. And also the possibility that he'll pull it, uh, George uh, uh, Bush and uh, sign it and call it an agreement, not a treaty, but it's really uh, obviously an, an a, a treaty. But as you know, a treaty under our Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and that's why George Washington advised so strongly against it. But if uh, we abide by that, uh, what's called the UN Small Arms Treaty, uh, that would allow uh, international bureaucrats to come into your home and take your gun away. And there, uh, well, in the words of... Uh, uh, the former U.N. Ambassador uh, John Bolton, quote, the administration knows it cannot obtain this kind of legislation in purely domestic context. They will use an international agreement as an excuse to get domestically what they could not get, other, could not get otherwise. So uh, now this uh, the gun treaty was completely blacked out by the uh, mainstream media in the United States, and they had the same access to the information as I did. But they just... It's not their ignorant of it. They just do not want to report it. Absolutely. They don't report on a lot of big things that are happening legislatively. Or they say, oh, the government can't take over health care, and then they do it. Uh, they, so really there's a lot of playing possum here. Uh, specifically on uh, other issues, you were saying Friday that they're very dejected and that one Bilderberg Group member, can you tell us the name, said uh, we're about whipped on this. Yeah. Uh, and if the euro goes down... Uh, uh, if the uh, euro goes belly up and their economists in Europe are saying it will go up, uh, uh, we've just uh, lost it all, one of them said. Well, I'm going back to my memory now because of the notes. I'm not the most neat. I don't have the neatest desk on earth, I suppose. But they were uh, very uh, concerned about the euro actually going uh, belly up. And also... When the uh, 
group of 20 met in, uh, uh, in, in Japan just shortly before this meeting. They gave, gave up on establishing a global uh, bank tax. They just couldn't do it. So, uh, and that was the, that is the international currency. The international bank tax are crucial to Bilderberg's plan to establish a world treasury department, which they're still determined to do. Well, I've noticed whether it's Copenhagen uh, or, uh, quote, financial reform, it's always the same treaty. That's for governments to hand over their power to private central banks so they can create a public world government. And and they're failing on every front. Uh, this has got to be uh, really exciting news for you, Jim. Oh, yes. Uh, we're celebrating it. But it's about time for you to rattle Mark Anderson's cage, isn't it? Absolutely. Stay there, Jim, because I want to come back to you in a moment, right. and we're about to go to break. Uh, dig around in your notes for other key points uh, that we haven't gotten into yet, specifically on that BP uh, oil spill, uh, and, and what they think of Barack Obama, too. I, I heard that you know, you've gotten some intel on that as well. Uh, but going to Mark Anderson, Mark, uh, what else did you learn uh, over uh, the uh, weekend and now in hindsight? Well, a number of things. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're on a speakerphone, aren't you? Uh, yeah, t that type thing through Skype. Anyway, one interesting development is all the calls that me and Jim and other reporters made to the Hotel Dolce where the Bilderberg insiders met were finally responded to, not with a press conference, not with a emailed press release, but by the creation of what appears to be Bilderberg's first ever website. And it's got all their Bilderberg speech. It's it, it's It's got past releases they put out so it appears to be the Bilderberg group and the list we got from it does match uh, the list uh, that uh, you guys were able to compile uh, and so the Drudge Report did link to uh, our uh, posting of the list stay there Mark Anderson and Jim Tucker I want to hold you guys till 5 after because we've only got two little short 5 minute segments and I want to get as much intel out of you as we can thank you for joining us Jim's got to go in about five minutes, but I want to keep Mr. Anderson five minutes of the next hour so he can finish his point. Before we go back to Jim, uh, though, uh, Mark, uh, deputy editor there at AmericanFreePress.net, uh, finishing up. Yeah, so it appears Bilderberg has now put out its first, I guess, 21st century uh, website. So very interesting. Yes, it is. And what I see in this is they they finally had to bend to all the pressure here they were their second time in Spain in their whole history, but the first time Spain, Spanish media has ever given them any coverage and any heat. And as Jim described, they're at this critical impasse, this critical juncture in their plans. And this was a really bad time for them to get a lot of media coverage from their point of view. So this, this new website of theirs is more than just kind of a sundry development. It shows that they're, they're getting their arm bent behind their back a little bit. And we're catching them at a bad time on, on, on their terms. And they didn't need the, all this heat right now. And we gave it to them. And uh, the, the media coverage, unfortunately, did not sustain in Europe as much as I had hoped. All right, Mark, I'm going to come back to you in just a moment. But to finish up with Jim, 